The Los Angeles Rams' Brandon Cooks blisters NFL secondaries with elite speed, quickness, and productivity. The Oregon State record-setting receiver and All-American also learned to dodge grief after losing his dad to a heart attack as a six-year-old. Determined, competitive, and focused, Brandon takes aim, putting opponents to flight in the game he plays and the life he lives. First player in NFL history to do back-to-back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons with three different teams. Saints, Patriots, Rams, all winning programs. How has that helped shape you? You know, helped me just develop that uh, that mental toughness. Going from different teams, you know, with the Saints in New England, built me, you know, to come here at the Rams and continue to just uh, do that. But at the same time, I'm also being blessed with great coaches, great quarterbacks. It's not all on my doing, but, you know, the guys that surround me to help me, uh, you know, be successful. If you had to defend Brandon Cooks, give me a scouting report. You know, that's a good question. It's really... A, scouting our team, you know, and how Coach McVay uh, sets us up for success and put us in positions to succeed. Um, And having a great coach like that, it'd be pretty tough to scout myself or just other guys in general just because it's always so different. I can't give you too much because, you know, (laughs) just in case our viewers or my defenders. Defenses is always about neutralizing that opponent. Yeah. How critical is speed to give you control? It is very critical, especially in, 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 uh, in my position and, uh, you know, my type of play. Uh, being able to have speed, uh, just to be able to sometimes blow the top off and help my teammates get open. You know, sometimes those are those type of games that have to be had. So if I can take the top off and draw defenders near me to open up other guys, I think that's very important. You lost your dad when you were six. Uh-huh. How did you find fathering while growing up? Um, I had such great uh, friends uh, with dads around me, you know, like my track coach, my my football coaches. And I think it was one of those things I always just picked pieces uh, from different families and people that had a huge impact in my life, whether it was coaches or my best friend parents. And so it was just one of those things that it had to be dynamic. But then my mom also played that, that father role as well. Brandon, how have you turned adversity around? You know, I always try to look at the brighter side and, and find joy, whether it's like, you know, losing my, my, my father when I was young. I think it's one of those things, anytime you can try your hardest to find joy in the negative, I think you always come out on the positive, and uh, that's just been my mindset. And they called you a sonic boom? I don't know in what Pop Warner? Like. But you didn't hang on to it. Yeah. But you've since been christened the Archer. Your celebration in the end zones at one point was the arrow to the sky. Yeah. Why does that resonate with you? You know, it resonates with me because it's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Uh, it's Psalm 144, 6, send forth lightning, scatter the enemy, and shoot your arrows and rout them. So fitting with what I do. I also wanted to glorify God in a different way. You know, a lot of people cross their chest. Uh, I just want to come up with a unique, unique way to glorify God with the gift that he's given me. They say that Ishmael mm-hmm. lived for the hunt. <laughs> yeah. So, Brandon, what is in your hunt? Yeah. What are you hunting for in this journey? I encourage others around me. Uh, you know, one of my favorite prayers before the game is, uh, may people miss me and see him in me. If at least one soul is saved through the way that I play, that's my goal in life, is just to be the best I can be for others around me. Uh, although we all know no one's perfect, um, but that's why his grace is so sufficient in my life. And uh, where he's brought me from is where he's taken me and, and where he has me now. It's so special, I just want to give him that glory. How have you made your Christ following contagious, enthusiastic, genuine? I think just being me and and, uh, really taking advantage of opportunities when they come up and not trying to force them. I think that, uh, you know, being in the locker room filled with so many different personalities, uh, the last thing guys want is uh, people to come forcing it to them. And I think if people have questions, great. Um, And also sparking those conversations um, as well. Being who I am and also letting people know that I'm not perfect and that I have a lot of problems, and I think that's just the best way to go about it. Most recently, something that he's sustaining you with as encouragement. That's a great one. I would have to say uh, focus. How Peter, when he was on the boat and he had his eyes fixed on Jesus, he was performing miracles. You know, he walked on water at a point. But when he got distracted from all the outside noise and everything that was going around him and didn't keep his eyes fixed on Jesus, he, you know, he sank consistently on my mind is keeping my eyes fixed on Jesus no matter what's going on in life.